Good morning. My name is Becky Holtberg, and I'm the President and CEO of the Alaska State Hospital and Nursing Home Association. On behalf of my member hospitals and skilled nursing facilities, thank you for having me here to testify today. Healthcare providers face a variety of administrative burdens, from state, local, and federal regulations to billing and insurance-related administrative costs. I'll focus my remarks today on the growing number of federal regulations and the impact of this administrative burden on our healthcare system. Healthcare providers and regulators share the same goals of improving quality and keeping patients safe. Providers recognize the importance of a stable regulatory framework that allows them to focus on patients rather than paperwork and to invest resources in improving healthcare access, cost, and quality. We appreciate recent work done by CMS in addressing regulatory burden, but given the amount of federal regulation and the pace of change, more must be done. Close to 24,000 pages of hospital and post-acute care federal regulations were published in 2016 alone. The American Hospital Association quantified the direct cost of compliance for America's hospitals in a recent report. Hospitals, health systems, and post-acute care providers must comply with 629 discrete regulatory requirements across nine domains, spending $39 billion annually in administrative activities related to regulatory compliance. For an average-sized community hospital of about 160 beds, this equates to spending over $7.5 million annually on regulatory compliance, with 59 staff dedicated to this purpose. For skilled nursing facilities, the cost of complying with the requirements of participation issued in October 2016 exceeds $735 million annually, or nearly $100,000 per building. This is at a time when all-in margins for skilled nursing facilities are less than 1%. We often discuss administrative burden in terms of direct costs, but it is important to recognize the opportunity costs as well. The opportunity cost is the next best thing you could have done with the financial and human resources spent on something or the value of the foregone alternative. It highlights the reality of scarcity, that when a dollar or staff hour is spent on administrative cost, it is not available to spend on something else. Financial and human resources spent in regulatory compliance cannot be used for adding services, implementing patient safety initiatives, hiring doctors or nurses, or addressing community needs. There are steps the federal government can take to address the growing mountain of federal regulations while ensuring patient safety. For hospitals, we recommend better aligning and applying regulatory requirements within and across federal agencies and programs. Regulators should provide clear, concise guidelines and reasonable timelines for the implementation of new rules. Conditions of participation for Medicare, a significant source of the cost of regulatory compliance, should be evidence-based, aligned with other laws and industry standards, and flexible. Requirements for the Meaningful Use Program should be streamlined and increasingly focused on interoperability. Finally, Congress, CMS, and the Office of Inspector General should revisit Stark Law and other requirements aimed at combating fraud to provide the flexibility necessary to support coordinated, high-quality, high-value care. Skilled nursing facilities face new unfunded mandates to hire staff and establish compliance programs under the requirements of participation that, due to their sheer volume and specificity, are difficult, if not impossible, to implement. CMS should revise the requirements of participation to make them more outcome-focused and patient-centered. We also recommend that the automatic revocation of CNA training if a facility receives a significant civil monetary penalty be addressed through changes to federal statute. Finally, we urge Congress to address the requirement that 5% or a minimum of five facilities receive a federal survey each year. This requirement unfairly penalizes small states with few facilities, and I want to thank Senator Murkowski for her interest in this issue. Rapid improvements in quality and patient safety are occurring at scale in our nation's hospitals and skilled nursing facilities. Voluntary partnerships between CMS and providers to improve quality like the Partnership for Patients and the American Healthcare Association's Quality Initiative, are resulting in measurable improvements in patient care. Skilled nursing facilities are improving on 20 of 24 outcomes measured by CMS, and Alaska providers are exceeding national trends in several areas. Alaska hospitals reduced the rate of death from severe sepsis and septic shock from 20% to just under 5% in two years. Behind those statistics are real people, someone's mother, someone's friend, someone's child, alive today because of this collaborative work. We must focus our resources on the quality improvement partnerships yielding real results for patients. The issue of administrative burden comes into sharp focus in rural America. Volume of regulation requires scale to implement and rural areas lack scale. The nation's small hospitals and skilled nursing facilities simply cannot continue to effectively comply with an ever-growing burden of federal regulations. For a large hospital, the opportunity cost of a regulation may mean a program delayed 
But for a small town, the choice may be much more difficult. The opportunity cost of regulatory burden for rural communities may be the loss of services. I want to thank this committee for your commitment to improving the nation's health care system and for having me here today.